Tsunami Studios. DC's Dead Planet issue three is here, and boy, oh boy, was this a really good issue. I argue it's my favorite one of the series so far. I don't know about the original Deceased, if I like it more than that. But this went to so many great places that I was super impressed with and I enjoyed a lot. And Tom Taylor knows how to write a good story. I love it so much. It's so great and just fantastic. So we kind of pick up where we left off in the last issue. Plastic Man is a horrible monster who's attacking this weird colony of like these people we don't know about yet. I said in the last video, I thought Zatanna died. She did not. They were able to revive her, but we lost Ragman and we lost Blue Devil. Just a nice little moment where Taylor's kind of calling back to some of the Justice League Dark stuff where Bobo's like, damn, I wish I could have saved Blue Devil because he gets the Oblivion Bar from him. I thought that was really nice, really interesting. Our team is like, okay, now we are able to go into this place. And once they get inside, they realize that this is kind of like a safe hold like a structure built by the elite of the world. So it's all these rich people. We see the likes of Oswald Cobblepot. He's, I like that Taylor's like, and the artist even, I can't remember who the artist's name is, but they're just like, what's use the non-fat bird looking version of Cobblepot? I like that a lot. You got Professor Ivo in there. You got Maxwell Lord, you know, just all the biggest, richest dicks in the DC universe. Here they are being assholes in this area. And it's kind of cool. I'm enjoying it a lot. We do get an appearance by Jason Blood, and if you guys don't know, Entrigan the Demon is one of my favorites at DC. I thoroughly enjoy that character. So he kind of appears, and he's talking to John. He pulls John aside, and they're just like, so I was in hell, and hell is really pissed at what's happening right now. So they're like, there's all these souls that aren't being collected because the dead are still kind of, I guess we kind of tease that the dead or the souls are still inside the bodies. They're just dead and acting that way. So who wants to come and destroy the world because of it is Trigon. Another one of my favorites. I love when a good Trigon appearance can come in because he's everything Mephisto will never be. He's actually a good devil. I, see, I seriously enjoy Trigon, so I hope we get some cool stuff there. We're teasing a lot of cool stuff. I'm definitely expecting Trigon to appear by the end of this series somewhere. So I'm very curious to see how that's going to look and how that's going to come about. As that's happening too, we kind of cut back to the safe haven where Ivy and Harley built. And we get a lot of nice moments here. We get a really cool moment between Damien and Jim Gordon where it's like, you know... You're like family, Jim, and he just gives him a hug. And this Damien, I'm, I'm really enjoying this interpretation of Damien because he is, he says it in the book too. He's like, I'm not as stinted as my father emotionally. Like, I'm willing to say, I love you. I'll hug you. I, I, I need this. Like, the world is a terrible place right now. We got to hold on to what we have. So him and Jim, they have a really nice moment. I really liked seeing that because that it, you just needed that. You're not going to get that from Jim and Jason, but having Damien be that, I think is really cool. And I thoroughly enjoyed seeing that. And we get a nice moment between John Kent and Mary Marvel where he's he's healed. He's able to be healed. And they are in, oh, the, the oh, I always forget what it's called. The Tower of Fate. I think that's what it's called. They're inside that. And they're just having a conversation. Yeah, we're able to heal you. You're okay. We need Superman to come back. And I like that there's like a little bit of just like a little bit of a spark between the two of them there. Because obviously Cassie is with Damien now. So I kind of enjoy that. Oh, maybe these two could have a little thing. I like it a lot. Just, you know, Superman being, you know, interested in a magic user. That's kind of fun. I think that's a really creative angle. And I like it a lot. So back at our stronghold of the rich and the dicks, they are able to sustain themselves because they have the Floronic Man tied up and they're using him as a connection to the green to stay safe. This causes Swamp Thing to literally lose it and he's really to, ready to attack people. I'm pretty. He cuts off the head of Max because he's just so pissed at them for doing that because the green is hurting because of it. And I like that a lot. It's a very fascinating angle. But how do the rich and elite like strike back to our magic people? Well... With a Mazo, of course. <laughs> what it, I was like, oh, okay, this is a very cool idea. I'm very curious to see how this Amazo is going to come into play. But no, they got a bunch of Amazos just ready to attack. So they have to retreat and they go back to the stronghold. And we get a nice moment with Cyborg, who's got a new body. It looks pretty clean. I, I do like the way that body's looking. I don't know. I'm kind of curious to see because I think they could play this one of two ways where there's actually a cure or the or the dead is kind of just communicating to Cyborg and making him say things. So it's all going to come back and be Cyborg's fault again. I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. But I like it. So we kind of have an idea of how to get the cure. And everyone's like figuring out plans. 
and I like the narration. It's like, we saw Superman symbol walk in again, and reluctantly we're all like, we got to believe everything he says because that's the power of that symbol. Even if John might not truly understand what he is saying, that is the power that that symbol has that we will just reluctantly agree with everything he says or just follow him. And I like that a lot. What a really great angle. What a really cool thing. Just because it's true. Superman has that effect. Even if it is John, people are going to flock to him and be like, you're Superman now. You have to do this and you have to be a part of this. So I, I enjoyed that aspect of it. So much great stuff here. Of course, we get some great stuff with Constantine and he's just like, okay, we got to get a plan together. Superman, I do not need you at this moment. So you just go save the world. If there is an anti-life equation, there's obviously a life equation, as Damien says. So we have to be able to find out what the life equation is. Luckily, Constantine's got the idea, so he's going to take Bobo with him. And who? there's somebody else. I can't remember if they took somebody else or not. But they are going to go find an old friend. And this was, this was something I wasn't expecting because I didn't imagine Taylor would go this route. But I really liked it. I think it's a really good idea. If you guys have not read A Good Day to Die, the deceased book that was a one-shot, this ties right into that. So they go, so him and Bobo, Constantine and Bobo, they go to this like old abandoned house and the narration's like, you know, they, Barda and Scott, they tried to save this world with Booster, but Booster stopped to exist because that world never existed anymore. Barda died, but the man himself, Mr. Miracle, who can escape anything, he escaped death and out walks Mr. Miracle Scott Free from this old cabin and he's just disheveled. He's grown a huge beard. He's looking miserable and upset and he just comes out and it's like, I can't help you, John. I don't want to help you. Just let me be in peace here where I can be miserable. I love that a lot. I love that a lot. I really like Scott Free. That's a really fascinating character. So just seeing this side of him, I, I always enjoy seeing a depressed Mr. Miracle for some reason. So they have their little moment there. And then John brings out the lasso of truth. And he's just like, I can get her back. We know there's a cure. I just need your help with your mother box. And hopefully it could give us the answers we so desperately seek. So in comes Mr. Miracle, a person we all thought long dead doing something so Mr. Miracle-like and surviving in a way that we definitely, he definitely didn't want to survive. Let's put it that way. He definitely didn't want to survive. And now that he's here, he's going to have to do something else about it. So I thoroughly enjoyed it. Everything about this issue, guys. Fantastic. It sets up a lot of stuff coming forward with like Amazo and Trigon and the Mother Boxes. It gives us a lot of great moments for characters I love, like Trigon again, Entrigan, Mr. Miracle, Floronic Man. Just seeing all those, the way those all play into here, really cool stuff. Deceased Dead Planet is an incredible book and I'm really enjoying it. So I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10. It is a well-earned 9 out of 10. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, Patreon, Twitter, all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.